And there is a web page that is available to each video mesh node. It's a per node basis. You can actually go and see some information unique to that particular device. So in this case, I've typed in videomesh1.ucdemolab.com, which associates to one of my video mesh nodes in a cluster. Now, when you put this in the URL list, you'll see it comes up with the option of, do you want to go to the control hub or do you want to go to the setup page? Now, I could have done two things. I could have put slash setup or I can click on this button here. So once I've done that, it's going to ask me authentication credentials. In this case, I'm going to use the admin credentials and I'm going to sign in to the admin. Now, once you've done that, remember this is on a per node basis. So what you see on the left hand side is we have several different things. We're going to go through each one of those. You have overview, network, trust store and proxy, certificate, server certificate, sorry, troubleshooting and account. But let's start with the overview page and let's take a look at this. So what does this show us about it? So obviously based upon the name overview kind of gives an overview of what's going on within the particular node itself. So call status. So what does that mean? So right now we're seeing zero because there's no active calls being hosted on this video mesh. So as I have participants join this video mesh for any meetings, doesn't matter which one is, that call number will increment by one per device connected. So if I have a DX80 that calls into a meeting hosted on a video mesh node, that would be one calls. If I have a room kit mini that comes into the same meeting, say for example, that would be two calls. If I have a third device that comes into a separate meeting that's being hosted on that video mesh node, that would be three calls and so on. So you get the idea with that one. So that's a number of active endpoints based that are connected to the video mesh node at that particular point in time. No details, as you can see on a no details portion of it in the center in the top, it tells you what is basically this video mesh node. So it's on a production image. I'm hosting on a CMS 1K hardware using the present version that's out there. It's provisioned to the cloud, so everything's good. Tells you the version of OS that I'm using. Tells me if QoS is on and if it's in maintenance mode and if I have proxy type settings. So I'm not using a proxy in this example here, so that's why it says none. If I had a proxy set to explicit or transparent, it would say it, say it right there under proxy type. Now if we move over to the right under node health, you get to see what's going on with the node itself. So CPU, memory utilization, disk space, and are the services being active in the sense of messaging uh, management and NTP sync. On the far right hand side, you have notifications similar to what you would on the control hub. In this case, call health check has failed. So at one point in time, the last check it did on Tuesday, May 19th at 2020 uh, at 1 p.m. GMT, it actually failed for some reason. So, okay, we had probably a network connectivity issue going on right then, and it failed. So it's giving me a notification that something happened. But on the same thing, if I look at the connectivity tests on the bottom right, you can see that all of them have passed. And if you're not familiar with this, you could actually hover over each one of them, and it gives you the details of exactly what it's trying to test and where it's actually going to. There's a lot of good information there. If we're working our way backwards here, registration details, you can see, yes, this particular node is registered. It is to my organization in my lab. It gives me ID and it tells me the cluster name, right? This is the same cluster name you would see in Control Hub, Box Pro dash full version, and then the cluster ID and that's available. So if you look over at the network configuration on the lower left, what we end up seeing here is a host name, which is videomesh1.ucdemolab.com. Interface ENS192, so that tells us it's a single NIC device. MAC address, IP address, gateway, DNS settings, NTP settings, and dual NIC IP address. Another indication that it's a single NIC interface. Now if we go down to network on the left hand side here, this brings up a new screen. So here this is very similar to what you'd see on the CLI. So what's my host name? DHCP, IP addressing, subnet mask, DNS servers. I could change all those settings right here on this particular website. In addition, if I go to the advanced, I get to see how do I enable the secondary NIC? What is the IP address for it? What about the container network? So there's basically several different Docker containers that we have on here. We have reserved IP range that you can see here is 172.17.42.1 with a subnet mask of 255.255.0.0. .255 you can change that, so you have the ability to do it here or on the CLI, so that just the, that IP addressing between container communications is set to something unique in your environment.
In addition, if I go down to Trust Store and Proxy, this is where we can actually set up our proxy settings in a sense of no proxy, transparent non-inspecting, transparent inspecting, and explicit proxy. So just for an example here, if I click on express, explicit proxy, you can see the parameters that you need. Proxy IP or full FQDN of the proxy, the port it's being used, what type of protocol, and what authentication. And you can do a proxy check also here, so once you have that information in there, it, it is verified. In addition to that, you can also upload the root CA or end entity certificate. Here you can look at the server certificate, basically the management of it, where you can upload it and see, and also the passphrase available for the authentication for both the proxy and also for secure communication to CUCM. Now, if we go into the troubleshooting, which has been a lot of interest of people once we announced this, troubleshooting has a lot of good things you can use from an, an admin perspective when looking into it. So send logs. So I could send logs to Cisco. So I could simply click here to send the logs. And what we'll end up doing is initiate the log upload to Cisco. And it's going to be, give me an identifier that will be unique that I can actually reference when talking to TAC about these particular logs. So you can see it gave me identifier and it said logs updated time. I can also download them to my local machine and then look at them myself and try to figure out what's going on. There is another session that is on Cisco Live On Demand that talks about the troubleshooting of these logs, how to actually look at them, what's important, and where some hints on where to go if you're trying to actually analyze a problem yourself specifically. In addition to that, we have the ability to do packet capture. So I can do it a packet capture right now if I want to on what's going on in this video mesh node. It does ca take a capture from both interfaces, being the internal interface and the external interface at all together, and is limited to a two gigabit file size. You could also send that up to TAC too, so they could have the logs and also this PCAP turner's issue, or you can download it and analyze it yourself. There's the traditional ping, trace route, and an NTP check that you can do directly off of this particular box. And then I said earlier about the QoS module, you can turn on the reflector tool for TCP or UDP and then basically do your test with your Python script to it. And then debug user is used by TAC for special access to things and get um, other parameters set up that you may not have access to without their permission and capabilities. Lastly, you can do a re re factory reset of device. So if I hit reset node here, it actually eliminates the registration to the organization itself. It does keep your IP addressing, but this way you can kind of reset the node and then re-register it up to a new organization, say for example. And then the account information, the account information is pretty straightforward here. This is about the logon account to the video mesh node itself. It does use the admin account. So it's the same admin account you have in the CLI. So I could have changed it in the CLI or I can go here and change the password as I want to right here, specifically on this page. Then I can set up what's the expiration time. Now this is a lab environment, so I put it to 365 days, which is not the default, but you can change it to whatever your security policy happens to be and then save that expiration time so you don't have to go back in 30, 45, 90 days and update this particular password either via the CLI or this web interface. So this is a very helpful tool. Get used to it. We're going to try to move some of this functionality over time into the control hub, but this gives you a view of what's going on inside of the video mesh node at this particular point in time and gives you the capability to do some troubleshooting on your own. So it's a very useful web page to be familiar with on the video mesh node.